You are muted. Oops. Okay. You are muted. Everyone, this is Steve Freeman with Decision First. Um, we're still having some people uh, into the webinar, uh, Experience BI Nirvana in 90 Days. So I'm going to wait a few minutes before I get started, uh, just maybe one minute, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, at which time I will uh, give everyone instructions on uh, sort of how to ask questions and um, uh, to interact with the webinar. So if you all can just hold on for one minute and we'll get started. Uh, with Decision First Technologies. I'm the Vice President of Field Operations for Decision First. And uh, thank you all for joining our webinar today, uh, Experiencing Biavana in 90 Days. Um, before we get started with the call, I'll just cover a, a couple of points. Uh, due, due to the large number of participants, I've mailed the phones for the duration of the call. Uh, where you will be able to ask questions via the chat feature on WebEx. So just here you are you know, sending your questions to both the host and the presenter. And at the end of the presentation, I'll ask the speaker, or I'll, I'll ask uh, Ashley to help me read through those questions and provide as many of those questions as she can so that we can address uh, any and all questions you might raise. I'm also recording the webinar, and it will be sent out uh, with a email on Monday. So let's get started. We've got about an hour, and I want to make sure there's time uh, for everyone to ask any questions that you might have. But before we get started, just in case we run out of time, I did want to provide everyone on the call with some information about some upcoming events that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, there's the SAP Analytics and Business Objects Conference in Dallas-Fort Worth um, at the hotel, uh, September 22nd to the 24th, uh, and also reporting and analytics uh, in October. Uh, Decision First will be there. Uh, we'll certainly be presenting uh, this solution as well as many others. It's a good, they're both good events. Um, to you know, to go to uh, learn about what other uh, what other peer groups uh, are doing within the analytics space. Uh, in both cases, uh, we do have some um, benefits for you know for our customers and, and just folks that that want to leverage the DFT name, uh, specifically at SAP Analytics and the and the conference. Uh, you leverage DFT14 as your discount code. Uh, you can get as much as four hundred ninety five dollars off. As a NASUG member, uh, 295 off as an ASUG member, and then report analytics uh, interactive in October. Um, we're sort of early on that event, but you can register on our site uh, on the Decision First website and save up to $400 off that event. So if you're, if you're in this area or Atlanta, or if uh, the timing works, uh, both of those events we do have some benefits uh, if you like to take advantage of them. So uh, let's let's go ahead and get into it here. So you know who decision. First, uh, Decision First, we're an organization that really specializes in analytics. Uh, for those of you that don't know us, um, you know, BI is it's really not something we do. It's all we do. We're very focused on analytics, and specifically SAP analytics. Uh, have been a business objects partner for really a number of years, seven-time partner of the year uh, in space, uh, really focused heavily on, on still the business object stack, but so uh, Mara uh, and uh, HANA, HANA Live, and those sort of assorted affiliated ECC technologies that really create the interaction between uh, the SAP ECC environment and analytics. So it's it's our sole focus uh, as an organization. Uh, we are thought leaders in this space uh, because we we're sort of exclusive to this area. Uh, we invest a lot. Our people invest a lot, and in, in really trying to be the best in the business. Um, with the uh, the book implementing SAP HANA, it's still a SAP seller uh, out there, and uh, and our folks uh, you might belong to their their blogs or their, their Twitter feeds, or you might see them at shows. We speak at most shows, including the, the aforementioned ones uh, at the beginning of the presentation. And it's something that we just take great pride in and uh, and certainly try to be leaders in this space, thought leaders up, to, up on the new stuff uh, and all of the new initiatives, including uh, uh, what we'll be presenting today uh, with BI Nirvana. Uh, you talk about BI Nirvana and experience BI Nirvana. Uh, what, it, what it's all about is getting those business users the access to the information they need, uh, when they need it, where they need it, at that point of decision-making. 
making uh, and put that information in, in the right context so that they can make that decision and it's the right decision and, and move on with their day. Uh, I certainly believe that when applied correctly, uh, business intelligence uh, really doesn't require a lot of training. It doesn't require um, uh, a lot of investment from learning tools because we've we've implemented in such a way that it just naturally becomes part of the decision-making process. Uh, and, and done that, and these and the users are excited uh, about the information they're receiving, and they see it as a, a true benefit. Then they become advocates, and, and that's really our sole goal uh, with with business intelligence. Um, so, uh, I guess without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about BI Nirvana in nine days and the challenges that it tries to address and how it addresses them. Really, the main focus here is is the core business challenge within SAP. Uh, we know that SAP ECC is uh, is the best product uh, to, to run your business on. And all the best run companies out there run on SAP, and we've heard this and we've seen it, and certainly we have it demonstrated here. We've got uh, Porsche and, and Bang & Olufsen, but certainly you've seen these posters, and, and there's just hundreds and thousands of customers that, that are reaping the benefits of, of, of better organizations because of SAP. But one of the challenges has been, and, and really has been for some time, is, you know, hey, we're investing all of this time and energy in, in our organization through SAP. We know it's collecting a lot of data about our organization, but actually getting that information out, that rich content out of SAP has been a challenge. And we know it's in there. Um, we know we're collecting it. We want to leverage that and optimize it to run our business. And Beyond Nirvana in 90 Days is really about extracting that information on a real-time basis so that we can become better at operations and become operationally efficient. Uh, what We've uh, we've tried to do here in this demonstration is uh, we've actually taken a business case out of Harvard Business School. I, I think it's it's an interesting story in that it outlines really some of the key reasons as to why we invested in ERP in the first place, what we were hoping to gain from it, and maybe what we've been lacking from an analytic standpoint and how BI Nirvana in 90 days and HANA Live and all the assorted technologies really sort of realizes that dream. So the story it's really interesting. Um, if you look at the data, it's from 2003. So uh, this whole um, notion, you can go look it up if, if, if you want to, but um, the notion was a use case around why you need an integrated ERP system and the benefits that you'd gain from it. And this was, again, written some time ago, but I think you'll see that we're still seeing some challenges in terms of how to get those, those benefits that we had always hoped we'd get. So the example goes something like this. You've got uh, a lit up, a purchasing manager at a Acme Incorporated, a fictitious company, and all of a sudden she's got an issue. Uh, the issue is that there's been a fire, you know, at uh, at a key supplier's plant, and that fire is it's going to drastically limit the supply of some key materials that they need for their manufacturing process. In this in this case, a resin, and that resin is used for dashboard assembly. So Acme's in that in business, and without that resin, there's going to be a couple of downstream effects. One, you know, with lack of that material, uh, it lead to a production slowdown, uh, shutdown, and so you you don't have of uh, a process stopped at any one of these manufacturing facilities. It's going to be incredibly costly. But beyond just that, because they're incorporating this product into a dashboard assembly, they're sending that dashboard to you know, an, another manufacturer who's going to use that and, and put it in their vehicles. Uh, so this problem becomes a variety of people's problems. And, and really the impact of these shutdowns because of this one key material being inaccessible is potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, maybe even millions. So it's a huge problem. And in this fictitious example, with an ERP system, we have an idealized, integrated view of the operations. And, and it goes something like this. Elizabeth, you know, being told that there's this resin uh, issue, first thing she does is she across all raw material, uh, raw materials across all her houses and um, to see w what type of inventory they currently have, uh, whether where they at with their C stocks, and you know, have shortages in particular um, particular processes. Where are they? And let's just get a, a view of the world where they might be. Um, from she's going to take a look at her manufacturing forecast for the next seven days and figure out where that material is needed, uh, when it is needed, and with that information, uh, Elizabeth is then going to generate a, a material movement request. Uh, she's going to look that resin across her organization to try to streamline those manufacturing processes. So that's that's one thing she's going to do. And then she's going to do is she's going to transmit some PO revisions to route that raw material to to the optimized location. So given scarce materials, let's go ahead and um, optimize.
optimize what I have and what is coming in. Let's make sure they go to the right manufacturing facility so at least we minimize the effect of potential stockouts with respect to, to this raw material. So now it's optimized for the current supply. Uh, additionally, in this example, uh, there's suppliers that supply Acme with needed components that also need that resin. They, they buy the resin for them and come back and they sort of outsource their manufacturing process. And so what is she going to do? She's going to take a look at a, a where used report, again, in this example, look across all the bill of materials, windows are impacted by that material, notify them so they can make um, appropriate changes. In this world, uh, again, this case study, we now have uh, an individual who's able to incorporate inventory reporting, manufacturing forecasting, uh, purchase orders, um, looking at uh, manufacturing processes, looking at bills of materials, all in one system so that she can address those questions quickly, optimize her operations, and, and basically save the day. Sounds great, um, you know, but what's the reality? Because it's not really that easy to achieve this integrated real-time analytical view of my operations. And in fact, when we look at a, a typical organization that's implemented uh, ECC or, or, or quite frankly any, uh, any integrated ERP package, uh, we see some uh, challenges uh, within, these, within, within these processes. So how do most people do it now? Well, currently the way uh, an ECC client might uh, this problem, uh, they'll, they'll go into the SAP GUI screen, going to take a look at an inventory balance report. They're going to enter codes uh, from the from the needed materials, and it's going to run, and, and it might run for some time. Uh, they're going to get a report out of SAP GUI, and they're either going to write it down, or more than likely, download it to Excel. Uh, from there, uh, you're going to run another report. You need to find out where those materials are uh, are, are are leveraged in different finished goods and what manufacturing processes uh, are gonna, uh, building out those, those finished goods. Well, first, which finished goods use that material? Well, I'm going to go into a SAP GUI screen. I'm going to enter codes against bills of material, and it's going to run for a while, and then it's going to generate a list of every single potential finished good that might incorporate that raw material. And then, again, you can write it down or, or download it, uh, probably to Excel. At which she's probably going to do two things. Uh, one, she's going to go into CRM, uh, whether Salesforce or SAP or some other CRM system, and she's going to check the CRM for a forecast of finished goods to figure out which ones we've, we've made commitments to. Uh, we're more than likely going to do a manufacturing forecast in those finished goods that from that list above and generate that report uh, to figure out which, uh, which manufacturing processes are scheduled, either based on capacity or demand, uh, to figure out where, where we have some potential problems. I more than likely download them to sell. And Elizabeth is going to combine those two in another spreadsheet, maybe with the lookups, maybe match some cells, maybe make some phone calls, emails, et cetera. But you can see right now what we're talking about. There's a lot of processes. There's a lot of um, action from different systems, incorporation into Excel, mixing and matching, and, and really using a lot of tribal knowledge that Elizabeth might have. Hopefully she has. Uh, in order to get that world view of uh, of this particular problem. And the real main issue here is that the data is there. Uh, and the systems to obtain the data, you know, exist. Uh, exist in various forms. However, in most real world examples, you know, Elizabeth and her peers uh, and, and Excel become the integration point to have this. And her tribal knowledge of how it all works, and we better hope nothing happens to Elizabeth because she's really the, the key to make all of this work. And, and so we go into a lot of our clients, we see this time and time again. So, so how do you address this problem? Um, there's, there's really two approaches to addressing what we just saw. Um, and really they revolve around some form of data warehousing strategy, whether it be SAPW or a, uh, or a custom data mart or, or rapid mart. You might have seen a rapid mart from SAP. Really the same concept, just different underlying technologies. Um, from the PBW perspective, it's a good technology specifically for analysis, but it's really not designed around operational analytics. Um, one, it's extremely time-consuming to develop BW. Uh, you're going to have to, those of you that on the phone that have BW, you, you know what I'm talking about. You, you extract data, you transform it, you load it, you optimize it, you build out things called info cubes in, in the example we gave below, or sorry, above, um, where you're looking cross 
uh, cross organizationally, you're building multi providers. And the end result of that sort of complex analytical view is that it's extremely brittle in design. It's not easily adjustable. As, as new initiatives come up, whatever I did design, one, it took me a long time to build it, but if it's exactly how I want it, making changes to that structure is extremely difficult. And it's difficult from a, from a time money perspective. So oftentimes things aren't changed. Um, more than that, though, because certainly BW is, is a good analytical product, it's really not real time. Uh, it's very difficult to store data in any way in BW and make it real time. So this scenario above, having sort of that real time view of my inventory and, and, and what's coming in and what's my forecast, you're always going to be latent, whether it's a day late or, or a week late, but that real time view is not really supported. Equal importance is that it rarely supports document level detail. So as I uh, try to obtain things all the way down to the bill of material, for example, that's not going to be stored in BW. That wouldn't be best practices. So there's a lack of integration there at that point in terms of having that detailed view of my data. And so then likely in, in, with this problem afforded below, BW really wouldn't solve your problem even if you had designed that way because you need the real-time data and you're going to be going back to the SAP GUI, downloading spreadsheets and the like. In real custom data warehouse, it's really about the same. It might be less brittle. It might, you might be able to add to a data warehouse based on original technology better, but it's, it's not going to be optimized for SAP content. So there's, there's pros and cons to both approaches. Really neither have the real-time uh, possibilities uh, that were really needed with the situation above. And so today we're really talking about is how can we address those types of operational analytics realities with, with new technology called HANA, HANA Live, and, and our package known as BI Nirvana in 90 days. And so everyone's clear as to what, what we're talking about. The integrated package is based on Suite on HANA. So we'll talk about on HANA in a second, but it's based on this concept of um, the HANA technology and ECC suite running on HANA. Uh, beyond just the suite on HANA, it also includes hardware to run it. The Cisco server, in this case, we're talking about a, a 512 gig HANA uh, platform from Cisco uh, and a 256 uh, QA dev box to support it. Uh, the suite on HANA sidecar implementation, which we'll talk about in a second. Business objects, uh, HANA drive, of course, uh, services from Decision First, delaying special content, reporting content, dashboards, and the like. All of this is included in what we're calling BI Nirvana in 90 days. So dig in a little bit on this concept of HANA Live, because some of you all might not have heard of it, although most of you have probably at least heard of HANA. I'll talk about HANA for a second. At the end of the day, HANA you know, stands for High Performance Analytical Appliance. Uh, but it's, it's an entry database technology that supports the, the real-time analytics necessary to solve the problems faced by Elizabeth. Um, for our purposes, it's extremely fast. It's fast from a retrieval standpoint, and it's fast in terms of al allowing data to be loaded into it in real-time and retrieved in real-time um, simultaneously. And that's a benefit that we're experiencing for HANA within the BI Nirvana in 90 days solution. When you have HANA and you want to run uh, ECC on it, for example, um, that's known as business suite on HANA. So there's really two solution types that are supported with the solution, with the run in 90 days. One is business suite on HANA, where you actually take your ECC application and you replace your underlying database, whether it's Oracle, SQL Server, uh, DBT, or, or what have you, ASE, and you replace that database layer with HANA. Uh, and that HANA is running your ECC application. And instead of uh, having any latency, we would simply query directly against your core ECC system. And um, just the technical jar on this is business suite on HANA. Uh, transactional data is uh, available uh, to, for, for analysis. Um, you query from it. Uh, your actual processes will run faster because inherently the in-memory technology known as HANA is, is much faster in, in cases, 100 times faster than normal disk uh, disk-based relational systems. An approach which you might have heard about and we're using uh, quite a bit is sidecar. And a sidecar is is much like this uh, picture describes. Instead of running your ECC application on HANA, you, you keep its current state, whatever whatever database you're running, and use a technology known as SLT 
to replicate that data in real time to a HANA database. Um, that, that replication happens, it's event-based, so it's going to happen in real time. Now you simply have a, a replicated HANA database that we can then perform our analytics on. Uh, the nice part about HANA Sidecar is that it, it really has zero impact on your core ECC operations, uh, but you'll get all the analytical benefit. And, um, and seeing this as, as the more common, although we have customers with both approaches, uh, we're seeing this as the more common approach for a first step, specifically with BI Nirvana in 90 days, uh, because it just doesn't impact operations uh, as much as, say, uh, transferring your, your ECC application to HANA. But for our purposes, both work exactly the same uh, for analytics. So, so what's HANA Live? So that's HANA and that's suite on HANA. What is HANA Live? Well, HANA Live uh, is really about taking that core data, that you know, business suite data, whether it's ERP, CRM, uh, M data, and storing on a HANA database and then viewing that data that are known as um, SAP views, virtual data models. That's what that VDM is. So core to uh, HANA and the, the way HANA works and the way you retrieve data from it is this concept of a view. And a view is much like uh, a normal database view. It's a, it's a set of joins and, and relationships between various tables within ECC that correspond to business processes. Live is a set of 850 pre-built business views, um, supply SAP, that correspond to a variety of business processes and reporting that you know are universally applicable, and so this concept on a live pre-built content that are available for you to immediately unpack, load against your HANA database, and now um, is that data um, you know sort of out of the box. So that's HANA Live. You also have this notion of customer views, so being able to take those core HANA Live views and configuring them for unique business processes. And you know, our expectation and experience has certainly been that most, if not all, customers will leverage the HANA Live capabilities, but also enhance them for your specific needs. Uh, what's about these is they are certainly extensible, so you can create your own and reuse them. Uh, these themselves are, are open. So any client, any, any product that can query SQL uh, can query these views. Uh, so while uh, we prefer the business object stack for a variety of reasons, Really, any technology that can query SQL database can query uh, the, the resulting views that are generated from this system. Um, it's, you know, it's one approach across all your apps, and, and it's extremely fast. Um, Mint sidecar, when you run business suite on HANA or use the sidecar method, the resulting views, the SAP views, the core views out of HANA Live, or custom views are applicable. And, and equal importance, especially all of our customers that are using Sidecar, most clients that have the Sidecar implementation are planning to migrate to Business Suite actually on HANA at some point. Whatever you use, we modify whatever report leverage, we migrate directly over to your Business Suite on HANA approach when that happens. So um, you can take advantage of the analytics now and um, migrate to Suite on HANA when, you, when it's appropriate and all your content that we've created and that you leverage will be applicable. Now, once you've done this, you can visualize the data any number of ways. We mentioned the business object stack. There's quite a few um, capabilities in the um, business object suite, whether it's Crystal or uh, Explore, Exploration Views, Web Intelligence, uh, your dashboards, uh, Design Studio, Lumera. You know, all of the technologies, not only do they work with this technology, they're actually optimized to work with HANA, which is nice. So whether you're using Lumera uh, or Explore, those products really come alive with the HANA technology because of the, the speed with which you re can retrieve data and enormous amounts of data that you can access. So uh, really all of these technologies simply work better on HANA uh, and you can extend your initial investment that you, you might have made within business objects. With the BI HANA package, after 90 days, what we're really talking about is going from really zero or whatever you're implementing right now to a real-time data platform after those 90 days. Um, letting uh, HANA and HANA Live, we're going to be able to take that information and put it into a HANA database. Uh, you're going to have access to really all areas of your ECC environment because that's what's provided with HANA Live. 
Uh, we will customize a couple of views or however many we need um, for a couple different areas of your business. We tend to start with sales and finance. Those tend to be one most uh, the most need. Certainly, that explains the um, the example of. Uh, but it's all the area where real-time data seems to be most applicable. So sales and finance tends to be the initial out-of-the-gate um, areas that we focus on, uh, but really can focus on any area that's that's of importance uh, to our clients. You'll receive custom tailored uh, dashboard, you know, for your for your needs. Um, leverage explore and exploration views in Lumera uh, to really get that quick time to market as far as these new visualizations. It'll mobile enabled, of course. Uh, because of business suite, uh, business object suite is, is a mobile technology, and those are very easy to take, explore, and webby and dashboards and make them mobile enabled. Uh, training and mentoring on the system so that you'll understand, uh, leverage it, but also how to maintain moving forward. And then I think most importantly, you've got this sort of you know platform for future mod modification and enhancement. Uh, our experience is that EI changes every quarter, every year. People have new business initiatives. And you need to be able to adapt to the new initiatives through better information. And that's one of the big strengths of, of, of HOM compared to some of the you know, relational technologies or BW. Um, it's not as brittle because it's so much easier to adapt and change and enhance and do that in real time and, and QA and everything else. You deliver new modifications and enhancements in weeks, not months, which is really what you need in order to make that connection with the business. So the level to, uh, to implement something like this, level of effort to implement it, you know, what do we do in 90 days? I can sort of see here what we're talking about, but for the most part, we're, in, we're installing business objects, we're installing, connecting HANA Live, um, bring up SLT uh, to replicate your base uh, from ECC over to HANA. Uh, and, and at that point, we really have, have two phases. Uh, simultaneously. One is really around content and how I want to visualize this data, what types of reports and security do we need. The other is, is to modify those views for the specific business requirements that we obtained within the first couple of weeks of the engagement. And so buying HANA views is really an important part of this, and it's really an important part of HANA moving forward. So when we look at the, the BI world within SAP over the next few years, we're really going to be migrating from uh, you know, TL and data warehousing and, and, and those types of things. And we're still going to do that. But of our new enhancements and new initiatives will be around building and enhancing uh, views to support the needs of the business. So I thought I'd spend just a little bit of time to talk about that and, and what it might entail. So so what do I mean by modifying a HANA view? Well, for HANA Live business view is really made of three pieces. A couple of them are... are Somewhat relevant, one of them is massively important to the end user. A private view uh, of the fight is really just, just about um, maintaining version control moving forward. It's thing we don't leverage. Uh, it's it's simply there so that uh, as we go to ECC, you know, 9, 10, what have you, uh, those private views are going to be maintained by SAP and leveraged so that if the underlying data changes, the underlying table structure changes, our views that are built off them will continue to work. Uh, then we get into this concept of reuse and query views. Reuse views are, are large views, large relationships. Customer is the example here uh, that we use to build query views. And the query views are the things that we leverage as business users uh, to answer specific questions. And there's you know, 151 query views that are supplied via um, HANA Live for various business processes. And what we do as an organization is we figure out which query view will support whatever use cases you're looking for, leverage them we can, and modify those query views as needed based on the unique business requirements. Uh, the skills to enhance uh, on a live view, it does take some skill. It's a variety of skills, actually. Uh, some of them are, are simply training on the modeling capabilities. If you're someone that can model data, uh, you can certainly learn how to model data within HANA. Uh, it's certainly applicable, so any data modeling capability is relevant there. Simply the training is required. Uh, familiar, familiarity with the concept of reuse views, which is really straightforward but does need to be taught, which reuse views are out there and how do you use them to build query views. But having a technical knowledge of the ECC table structure and a functional understanding of ECC are really 
core. In cases, this is multiple people within an organization. So having that understanding of how business processes work in ECC and how they relate to the underlying technical table structure is really where someone like a decision first comes in, our unique capability of doing both of those things to design a view off of that database uh, that supports the business need. That's that's really what's required um, from a you know a technical understanding to be proficient at enhancing Hana Live, and that's the the skill that we're bringing to the table with respect to this um, uh, beyond our 90 days. So now enhanced view. I thought I might go back and take a look at what that sort of idealized integrated view of operations might look like with beyond Nirvana in 90 days. So we remember this sort of uh, Kate from Harvard, uh, this is what they envisioned when they envisioned an ERP system, having this one individual being able to look at all of these various data sources. We sort of showed you what reality was in terms of all the various input screens that they're going into. But with BI Mono, what we're really going to do in this case is we're going to build a set of views, and we're going to have views that support those business practices, and we're going to be able to do that in a matter of weeks to be able to create that view and then provide any number of visualiz visualizations. Maybe it's a web intelligence report. Um, maybe it's Fiore as a, as a front end uh, that's it's accessing that view. Maybe it's Lumera. Whatever is appropriate, but they're all going to access that real-time view contained within uh, the completed system, accessing the data, providing them the, the integrated support that was sort of dreamt of uh, back when we, we first started implementing ERP, uh, but really realized because of the technology that's available. Uh, an example of a deliverable, and we're you know, very proud of our, our client TRCC for winning an award for this solution, uh, is Textile Rubber uh, Chemical Corporation. They're a company based up in Dalton, Georgia. Uh, we started with them in January uh, of this year. We completed it in March. So it was actually less than 90 days. And in that time, uh, we were to implement HANA Live uh, business objects. They, they did not have business objects. Um, a fair architecture, we customized numerous HANA views. This was a client that really had very little vi visibility. They were relatively new to ECC. Uh, they had actually just gone from a, a new implementation on uh, C to HANA uh, in the late December timeframe. And they went to it for the main reason of, of analytics. They wanted analytics. They, they really wanted to reap the benefit of all the data that was stored in ECC. And they didn't see BW or, or uh, relation warehouse or what have you being either cost effective or timely enough for their needs. The client was, you know, struggling with visibility into a number of things: their, their cash position, variance reporting, uh, AP aging, labor cost, really the full spectrum. They wanted to get, a, they wanted to get visibility into their business. Their their solution was much more. Well, let's look at organization across all pieces of the business, and they want to be real time. And we were able to do this across eight different plants uh, and covered the areas of finance, sales, and inventory. And you can see uh, the, the top, anyway, of a dashboard that we built. I'm going to uh, alt tab over here to um, uh, – I knew my uh, uh, would expire. Go ahead and go into business objects. Just show you an example of, of what deliverable might look like. So you have a dashboard. For those of you that are familiar with Excelsius can recognize it. And I've dummied up the data here, so it's not their real data. Um, in real life, this is a, a live system. Uh, their CEO uses this system on, uh, on an iPad. Uh, they have the ability to look at all areas of the business and see what's going on in a real-time fashion, whether it's a, a P&L, uh, looking at actual to plan across you know, gross profit or net sales, uh, looking at their, their overall balance sheet, uh, looking at specific chart accounts, uh, their training, their, their inventory DSI, uh, their received DSOs, uh, cash flows, um, sales, right? A high level view of their business across a variety of metrics all the time. And uh, in their implementation, when you hover over a specific client, you can drill through to detail, uh, maybe taking you to a Webby report or maybe taking you to Explore, uh, but show that underlying detail all the way down to the transaction level. And that's really important for a lot of our clients, being able to see actions like you're seeing here, but being able to go into that, that specific sales order. Uh, or, interesting case, was their advanced reporting. And in fact, they were engaged with this solution. It gave them visibility into their organization that they never had before. One of the interesting takeaways from this solution 
they were able to identify some real world challenges uh, some real world challenges that um, uh, that popped up um, through through the visual analytics that they never had before so one example uh, what they were using uh, they were using this actual variance report looking at their inventory adjustments usage variance price variance these types of things they noticed a blip in one of their usage variances uh, able to drill down on it uh, discover which particular plant was having the usage variance, which particular customer um, today. And, and at that point, you can really see a large blip that they were they had a huge usage variance. They were using far more product to complete their finished good than they had ever anticipated. They, they called the plant. They called the manager. What's going on? It turned out that the uh, there was a scale man- malfunction at the end of the production line. And so they were using a lot of material, but at the end, it looked like it was the appropriate material. It weighed the right amount. They shipped the right amount. They charged what they thought was the right amount, but in fact, it was uh, it was actually quite a bit heavier than what they had bought. Uh, and they were basically giving away free product. And the only way they really had that kind of visibility, since the scale itself was malfunctioning over a certain weight, was to look at that usage variance and have that sort of real time visualization of the data to make a decision. It's an interesting use case. You know, they they certainly saved thousands of dollars a day by identifying that. And really think the story there is there's nuggets of information contained within all our operations. And if we can just bring visibility to them side of a, uh, a, you know, a list values type of report, if we can bring visualizations um, in that, then we, can, uh, then we can enable our folks to make better decisions um, and, and certainly affect the business. So back to the PowerPoint. Um, Another example of, of what that might look like. So inventory trending, AR aging, uh, margin by sales, variance trending. All of this was available, and if you remember the time frame, that was all done in about two months. So we were able to optimize those views, tailor them for their needs, and build that front end that they're looking at all in real time, all mobile, uh, really going from no solution to world-class solution in less than 90 days. And that's one of the things that we're so excited about with this uh, HANA Live BI Nirvana uh, in the day's solution. So a couple of quotes, um, you know, from from the guys, and, and as I mentioned, they they won an award at um, at our uh, an innovation award. I think it's the Trailblazers category for the solution. You know, innovative uses of of Hana. That was what the award was for. And uh, really, the, the message is one: yes, there's value uh, in this data, and when you can bring that real time value to life, you can make better decisions. Uh, the other story here is it's not just for the biggest companies in the world. You know, there's there's lots of SAP clients that have spent hundreds of millions of dollars in SAP, and they've got you know lots of money to spend on lots of various things, which is great. Um, but there's also smaller companies that um, that really want to get the benefit of SAP and ECC, but they they really don't have unlimited funds uh, with respect to analytics. Well, uh, and, and then maybe they've been shy about Hana. Well, in this case. They're a small organization, comparatively speaking, and one of the reasons why they invested in HANA was its simplicity. Uh, was the was the smaller organization they needed to support the solution, and the value and the time to value that they could get from it. So, uh, this is a packaged offering. Uh, it's got a couple of variables to it that that are hard to anticipate. For example, um, how much does uh, business suite on HANA cost? That is a customer dependent sort of calculation. So um, these prices that I'm mentioning really just have to do with the Cisco or VirtuStream um, offering as well as the uh, decision first uh, services for those 90 days. Um, there's an annual price for HANA. If you don't have already, many customers do. Uh, do you need to purchase HANA? It's a percentage of your license spend for business suite or there's various ways to purchase HANA on its own. Uh, business objects may or may not already be um, within your um, suite of that you currently own. Um, can help with all of those, but when you go on premise and leverage the Cisco hardware that we mentioned before, uh, that's one option, and Cisco is a great partner, and we can leverage their technology to support this solution. Uh, or cloud has become very, very popular. Uh, VirtuStream is a partner of ours and, and Cisco's as well. Um, they have a uh, a packaged offering that we've uh, been working together on to provide the same solution, but here it's in the cloud where that data is replicated non-premise 
uh, in the cloud on the same Cisco hardware, uh, and it's only it's a per month charge for uh, for that technology. That is basically it. Um, you know, I wanted to open it up for any questions uh, that we might have, but sir, we're excited about BI Nirvana in 90 days, the HANA Live uh, technology, and really HANA in general has given our clients um, you know, the opportunity to provide solutions much more quickly, uh, to provide real time that was really you know, possible only through SAP GUI screens uh, and, and down, you know, downloads to Excel, uh, to provide much better visualization into that real time data to cre create view and analytics that support business processes and to do that in a very agile manner. So from our perspective, we can deliver solutions much more quickly, much more cost effectively, and sort of change the game with respect to how timely that information is and to align much better to the business user and, and create assets out of them so they use the data to make better decisions. So I guess at this point, I'll open it up to questions. Ashley, I don't know if anyone's uh, come up with any questions I can't see. We do have a couple of questions. Our first question, is there a way to get non-SAP data into the HANA environment if you have more than SAP? No, that's a great question. I should probably put that in the slide somewhere. Um, yes, absolutely. So Suite on HANA is really a, a licensing option. There's HANA is a database. Suite on HANA is a way to use that database. And Suite on HANA, the license really is only for ECC data. So with most of our clients, what we recommend and what they've employed is suite on HANA license for all of the ECC data and then a unit or two of, of, of enterprise HANA um, that's more agnostic in terms of how you can consume that data. So you can leverage that data from other systems, bring it into the HANA database, and those views that I was mentioning, those views can certainly um, and create and join from multiple data sources. So, um, and that's, we're seeing a lot because most clients don't just have ECC. They might have Salesforce.com as their CRM system. They might do forecasting in another system or in spreadsheets or, or whatever the case may be. All of those can be brought into a HANA system and, uh, and then leverage those views that I had mentioned. Okay. Our next okay. question is what version of business objects do you need to be on? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I'm actually not sure if, if there's a limitation with 3.1, if 3.1 can or cannot access. I can, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. Most of clients are using 4.1 that we are, um, in fact, all the clients I know of that are using HANA or HANA Live are leveraging 4.1. Um, many clients that are on 3.1, they just don't happen to be uh, – HANA. So I can I can get an answer to you there, but I'm I'm not sure if there are limitations or not. If you're in the cloud, is anything you build and configure easily reusable if you then move it to on premise? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it absolutely is, and in fact, we see a lot of our clients doing that, um, especially in proof of concepts or pilot phases, where you know they they simply want to take advantage of BI Nirvana um, in the cloud. Uh, that way you can get up and you can start developing literally in days uh, and enough to install hardware or go through whatever processes uh, might exist. So going to the cloud is very easy uh, because of the nature of the data, because doing real-time replication and it's small little chunks of data, uh, you actually don't have nearly the issue you have with traditional data warehouses that are bulk loading data into the, the HANA system. And so these little bits of information that are streaming into, um, into the cloud, they, you know, it's easy to set up and it's easy to get going, uh, but then taking that structure, that m virtual model, and then you know, placing it on an on-premise solution uh, is, is really very easy to do because it's the same database structure. And really that's what's important is, is you know, that database structure is, that ECC table structure, that where the, that's where HANA lies, um, points, and that's where all of our customizations are built on. Um, and that would not change whether you're in the cloud or not. Okay, do I have to buy SLT separately from SAP? Yes, yeah, many of our customers already have it, um, but if you don't have SLT, you would need to purchase SLT. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a, 
I hate this old product. It's a it's a product that's been around a long time. Uh, FT, its original purpose was simply to replicate ECC data, and so many people did that anyway. And um, what we're doing with SLT is simply replicating it into a HANA database. Uh, it is a product from SAP um, uh, that need to be purchased if you do not own it. Um, relatively speaking, you know, comparatively speaking, it's uh, it's it's not a it's not a huge big ticket item. But you know, as as in all things SAP, the price ends on um, on you know pre-negotiated discounts and everything else. But it's um, but it's a requirement for the sidecar solution. A couple more for an existing ECC customer who has not migrated to the suite on Hana, is it possible to set up a Hana sidecar solution using Hana Live, extracting from the source EC that is not on Hana? very end. Could you repeat the question again? <laughs> For an existing ECC customer who has not migrated to suite on HANA, is it possible to set up a HANA sidecar solution using HANA Live, extracting from the source ECC that is not on HANA? Yes, yes. That that and that is that, that's I think if I understand the question correctly, that is the definition of sidecar. So taking a core ECC system that you've not upgraded or, or not migrated to to you know to suite on HANA it's, let's just use Oracle as an example. So you've got ECC on Oracle. We would uh, we would install or, or leverage SLT, depending on whether you have it or not. Um, the SLT point it at the um, the destination HANA database and basically replicate your Oracle database. And, and not all of it, by the way. You can replicate just pieces of it. In fact, in most cases that's what we do because not all of that data need for analytics. So we replicate what's needed. Um, real time, right, over to the HANA database, and you unpack HANA Live on top of that HANA database and do your analytics. Last question. If you have SLT in one HANA system and separate and separate HANA Enterprise in another system, can you build a single logic view that combines data from both? I think the answer is yes, but that probably serves a smarter person than me to answer it better than that. <laughs> so I'll do, I know, uh, Ashley, if you have that individual's contact information, but we can put one, some of our um, sort of HANA modeling specialists on the case and, and answer that better than I just did. I think the answer is yes, but I, I think I can give you a much better answer uh, if we have that individual's contact info. Okay. Do you have more questions? That concludes our webinar for today. We thank you all for joining us, and we will be sending out a recording and a link to the slide on Monday.